Okay, so first things first, let's take a look at the make file. We've got make targets for all clean DLL and EXE. And all's gonna build and link everything. Uh, clean just removes everything. Uh, DLL will rebuild the DLL component. And EXE will exe will relink the executable with the modified DLL if we wanted to. So now we can go take a look at our uh, RC file that just specifies the DLL we're going to link in as, uh, as an asset. Now we can take a look at our DLL code. Our DLL main or onload or whatever is empty. We've got our uh, uh, just a Zor function. Uh, we can put whatever uh, whatever encoder uh, decoder we want in here. Uh, if you wanted to switch it up to AES or some other uh, non exactly reversible uh, math, then you would need to uh, break this into two components and do a uh, and do an encode versus a decode where Zor is uh, exactly the opposite of, itse of itself. Uh, the little bit of math here is about uh, values in the stack. Alright, so now we get into our exported function, the simple uh, printf hello. Uh, basically, this is the same as our uh, inline virtual protect from before. We've got our uh, get EIP for start and end. And we've got a little bit of not padding. So what we do is set our virtual protect, then we get our start and end EIP values, then we call our Zor function. I broke it out so that you could play with uh, play with other ways to do it without a lot of code modification. Uh, in practice, I tend to not break it out into a separate function uh, because then you're giving a single point fail where uh, you could just it, once you realize that this is a uh, uh, this is the decode function, then you could call it for every uh, call it for every function within your uh, within your obfuscated DLL if you were trying to take it apart. The knobs are in there for multiple reasons. Uh, one is uh, it's a simple marker to search for. Uh, once you get a, I if you had a longer encoding section and you got EIP and you didn't want to have to do all that uh, checking in, in math ahead of time, you could essentially get EIP while you're back here and then walk forward looking for a sequence of four, uh, four knobs. You could also put a, uh, use a different start and end herring uh, that you knew wouldn't occur in your payload and uh, just put a little jump here over the knobs. Uh, or over whatever you wanted to use as your herring, uh, you know, int three and some garbage, whatever. Uh, then we've got our hello, uh, our simple printf hello call, and then we have a little more uh, padding or herring depending on how you're implementing. We've got our get end. We just do a simple jump over uh, to take this out of execution flow. Uh, then we do the uh, Zoring again. Uh, the one there is so that if we wanted to break it out into a single function, we could use the same encoding bit for uh, all of the functions. The other purpose that this would serve is even if you had uh, encoders in line here, and you wanted to automate the process, you could have a, a function like it, kind of like that, that you uh, that you export, so that you could call it directly, and it would run through and encode all of your uh, encode all of your functions 
within the DLL, and then you could do a binary copy and paste uh, in an automated fashion uh, from within a uh, from within a debugger or uh, uh, within a code section. So that's the reasoning for the way we did all those things. Now we've got our uh, DLL loader. Just go straight to the end if you want to uh, if you want to see the uh, relevant components. Uh, the I borrowed the Joachim Bach. Uh, ref I know I butchered that name, but anyway, uh, the reflect inject code he's got on GitHub and provided appropriate credit and reference. Uh, so what we do is get the module handle of the current module, then we find our resource, uh, then we load it, get its size. Uh, we malloc our buffer, buffer for the DLL, uh, memcopy the data across, uh, then we call the tweak load library function. Uh, none of our load library or uh, get clock address and normal functions will work uh, when we uh, when we're doing reflective injection. Uh, if we wanted to do standard load library, we'd have to drop a file on disk. Uh, so yeah, uh, or we'd have to write some code to fix up the uh, process execution block to actually reference where this is loaded in memory. Anyway, uh, so then we use the uh, reflect injection get clock address uh, code and we call our hello function a couple times. Uh, something to note if you just compile this and run it, it's going to crash uh, because it absorbs the data uh, that hasn't been encoded yet and then tries to run the encoded data and that's obviously going to fail. So we'll go through the manual patching procedure in a debugger in just a moment and I already talked about how you would automate that process. Um, so, okay. Let's um, move into the debugging session now. So this is what our Part C executable will look like. Before we do the binary patching, look for all intermodular calls. Load resource is going to be about where we want to be. Okay, so we've got our load resource call. We can see our mem copy. Uh, this is where it would tell us it couldn't load the library from memory. This is the uh, pushing of the name of the function onto the stack. And this is where we actually call the function. We'd step into that. Now we're going to be inside of our uh, DLL. And one of the issues here is view executable modules that you can see uh, we can't get into the DLL through our the the normal methods. So now we're going to come back to the CPU window. Okay, this is our preamble virtual protect call. Here's our pushing of hello onto the stack and our calling of uh, puts. This is our NOP spacer. So what we would want to do is follow in disassembler. I mean, follow and uh, follow and dump. All right. And we would want to go ahead and select our uh, section that's going to be encoded. And then we would run uh, until right before our uh, 
right before our jump here. Now we can see this is what it'll look like encoded. Then we could binary copy and paste that into uh, using our hex editor of choice into our DLL and relink the executable. When we do that, we'll get a DLL that looks more like this. We'll do the same thing, searching for all of our modular calls. Going to look for our load resource call. Now we'll come down and look for our call EAX. This is our first call to hello and then our second. Don't know if it's going to show because I've got this with uh, window selection, but uh, here is our printing of hello. If we step in to the call, we can see our normal stuff. This is the end of our encoded section. And what we're looking at here is do 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 do. We've got our virtual protect call. Let's go ahead and set a breakpoint after that. That was the call to our Zorit, and we'll see our jump over our save VIP thing there. We've got our couple of knobs, then we've got our puts hello. We've got our call, and now it's re-encoded again. Then we're going to uh, go ahead and print done, and that's it. So hopefully it was useful. Uh, I didn't need to, uh, it would have been kind of pointless to drop a malicious payload in there uh, because I also covered the reflect injection part, and the reflective injection is going to get past uh, most any antivirus anyway. So hopefully it was useful, and uh, Thank you for watching.